Hey there. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to safely use the 12G SDI port of your Blackmagic Pixis so you don't have any problems. And before I get into it though, huge thanks to BH Photo who lent me the Pixis to test out, review, and make videos like this for all of you. If you're looking to pick up some camera gear, please go check out BH. That's where I buy all my stuff from. There are links in the description for the Pixis, all the gear I'm gonna talk about in this video, and all the gear they use on a regular basis. So big thanks to BH for making stuff like this possible. Now, in this video, I'll talk about how to safely use your camera and SDI port so you don't have any issues. I'll talk a little bit about SDI in general and then some alternatives if you don't even wanna deal with your SDI port. Now, I do have to mention that this is not specific to Blackmagic or RED or RE or whatever. This is just specific to SDI in general. Now, I know a lot of you out there have probably heard the horror stories of people blowing up their RED Komodo's SDI port over the last several years. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that RED sold a lot of Komodos. And I think a lot of those people that were buying those cameras, it was their first time having a camera that has an SDI port and specifically a 12G SDI port, which carries a higher resolution and frame rate. All right. So what is SDI? SDI is similar to HDMI in that you send a video signal over a wire, but it looks very different than HDMI. These are lockable connectors. These are called BNC connectors, and this is what you use when you're using an SDI signal. SDI is great because it's a lockable connector versus HDMI. It's a little bit more reliable, and you can also send the, the signal over a longer distance without signal degradation. And also, there's a lot of higher-end video production equipment that only uses SDI, and if you're working on set with larger teams and production crews, you're most likely going to be using Using SDI. So that's why cameras like the Pixis and other, you know, cinema cameras always have SDI ports on them. Now, 12G SDI refers to the higher resolution and frame rate that you can send over the, the signal. So 12G stands for 12 gigabits per second, and you can send a signal that's up to 4K60. You've probably also heard of 3G and 6G, which are lower resolutions and frame rates. So it's really cool. You can send a very high resolution signal at 60, 4K60 out of this camera. Most of us are usually just monitoring and 1080, but you do have that option if you're using this for event work or you need 4K signal for something else. So just keep that in mind. Now, one thing before we get into the protocol and how to do this is I do recommend that you get a high quality shielded 12G SDI cable. There are many good ones on the market. There's a lot of very you know, high quality products from reputable brands. This is the one that I've been using. I use this on my Komodo when I had it for a long time. And this is the one, I'll leave this in the description if you want to uh, to check this out. Now, what I do like about this cable specifically are the right angles. It keeps it very flush on the camera and I find it to be pretty handy. So make sure you get a shielded 12G SDI cable. Make sure it's a good quality one. All right, so now let's get into talking about the SDI protocol and how you connect your SDI cable with your camera and accessories. Like I said, this is not specific to Blackmagic or RED or RE. And before making this video, I did some preparation by looking around online to see if Blackmagic had their protocol listed for their cameras. I couldn't find anything on their website or in the Pixis manual, but I did find some information from RED and from RE. So I will leave links down below if you guys wanna go read those and check those out. But essentially it boils down to one main thing. You wanna make sure that everything in your signal chain, your monitor, your video transmission, your camera, they all have power and they're properly grounded before you connect your SDI cable. What happens is that if you have your, let's say your monitor and your camera connected to each other over SDI, and then you add power to your monitor, sometimes what can happen is it can create a ground through the SDI cable and short circuit and break the SDI port in your camera. So again, the way around this is make sure everything has power and then you connect your cable. Now I could just right now, because I know that there's a, there's power on the monitor, there's power on the camera that I could connect them. And it doesn't matter if I have it connected like this. So for example, I have a battery on my camera, I have batteries on my monitor, or if you have a V mount that's powering the camera and the monitor and all the accessories in one, it doesn't matter as long as everything has power and it's connected properly. Now, the way that I ensure that everything is working properly and that I have a good ground on each of my devices is I just turn them all on first. And you don't actually technically have to do this, but this is something that I like to do and it's like a little extra safety for me. So I'm gonna power the monitor on, I'll power the camera on, Luckily, the Pixis doesn't take that long to power up. And once everything's on, I can see the screen. Everything looks good. So you can see the monitor's on, the camera's on. Now I can connect them up. So I'm just going to connect. It doesn't matter which order I connect them in. So I'm going to connect the SDI to the monitor. And then I'm going to connect it to the camera now that everything is turned on. And there you go. So you can see that now I have a signal on my monitor. All good. 
That's all you have to do. Now, what happens if you need to change a battery, you wanna turn something off? All you have to do is unplug the cable and then you can power things down. Now, it doesn't matter if you which end you unplug or you unplug both of them. It's safer to actually unplug both of them, but I just unplug one usually and then I'll go through and change my batteries. Same thing that happens before, I just turn everything on and plug it back in. Not really a big deal, pretty simple. So. It is that easy. Uh, I think a lot of people are don't like this because they're used to either using mirrorless cameras or cameras with a you know a OEM monitor that's connected like an FX6 or you know a C300 or something like that, and they're just not used to this procedure. But it's really not that big of a deal, and you kind of get used to it quickly. You also have to remember that these kinds of cameras, when you're using them in on production set. Uh, shoots and stuff like that. The cameras are just on all the time. So you have everything powered up, you have your monitor, you have your video transmission, you have all that stuff going on. These cameras aren't like turning on and off quickly. So generally when I'm using a camera like this, I get everything turned on and running and then I just hook up my SDI and, and get to work, not a big deal. And then when the battery gets low, as I said, just pull one of them off, power everything down, swap everything out and go back at it. I just wanna take a brief moment to mention that there are some very reputable companies that make what's called an SDI isolator. Basically, it's a box that goes in line from the camera to the accessories and has a switch to turn it on and off to isolate the camera from everything else. Now, I haven't personally tried these before and I have heard that they work pretty well, but to me, I just generally like to keep it really simple, having to buy less things and having less stuff rigged up on my camera. It's pretty simple to just unplug the cable and then turn things off. So that's just kind of how I roll. So if you do go check out the links in the description for the SDI protocols from RE and RED, you will see that they don't necessarily say that you have to have everything turned on. And you may have heard from other people that you don't need to turn the camera on or turn the monitor on or whatever. Like I said, I personally like to do that to just ensure that everything is working properly, it has power, it's grounded, everything's okay, and then I plug in my SDI cable. So I've been doing this on the Pixis, and I've been, I did this on my Komodo when I had it for whenever, however long I had the Komodo for. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. And after you do it a few times, you'll just get into the routine of it, and it's really not a big deal. But if this is stressing you out for whatever reason, or if you need to turn the camera on and off a lot, then there's an alternative, which is really cool. And I did talk about this in my first impression video. Now this port on the front of the Pixis here, this is labeled viewfinder and this is a USB-C port and this is really to send signal and power out to the new Ursa EVF and also the Pixis monitor whenever that ships. But in the meantime, or if you don't want to buy those accessories, you can still get a 1080p signal out of this USB-C port using a cable. So there are lots of cables on the market. I've tried a few and I returned the ones that didn't work, but the ones that did work that I kept were these two cables here. And I have two for a reason. This one's short. So this is like an 18 inch cable. This is just for, you know, on camera stuff. And I have a longer one if I'm doing studio type stuff. So the cool thing about this is this has nothing to do with SDI. You can do this with everything turned on, off, any combination you want. You can turn the camera on and off, all sort, all that stuff. It doesn't matter at all. Cause we're not touching the SDI port. So we're gonna plug in this USB-C into the camera. And then we're gonna plug in this to the monitor. This is HDMI. And I just have to set the camera over to HDMI or the monitor over to HDMI and boom, now we have a signal here. And the nice thing here is that I can just turn the camera on and off like you would normally with a mirrorless camera or whatever, and you won't have any SDI issues whatsoever. All right, so what are the downsides of this? Well, we're not using the SDI port if you need to use that for video transmission and that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know if you can link this through transmission systems and all that, and all that. I haven't tried that yet. But the other thing is there's a couple of operational things in the camera which may change in the future. So let me show you some of those limitations. I do want to mention that at the time of recording this video, I'm using firmware 9.1.1. So if you're watching this later and you want to know like what firmware I was on, because there's probably going to be updates and they might change some of this stuff. I just want to mention the firmware that I'm on at the time of recording this. So I do want to mention that um, if you come in here to the setup menu and you have the function buttons, I use these F1, F2, F3 buttons for F1 is usually status text. F2 is false color and F3 is focus assist. One thing you might notice if you're used to the Blackmagic Pockets and the 6K full frame is usually have a third option for EVF. And so what I'd notice here is that if I'm using these buttons to toggle on and off, let's say false color and focus assist, it doesn't do that over the 
USB-C out of the front. So you either need to toggle that on off on your monitor. A lot of monitors have, you know, focus assist or peaking and then also have false color. The only other option is to come into the monitor section, go to EVF, and then you can toggle on and off focus assist that way. But it's kind of a pain, uh, but it does work. It will send out the proper signal over, you know, over HDMI and you can turn, you know, the LUT on and off and you can get a clean feed and you can do all that stuff in here, but you can't use the, the function buttons if you're used to that. So I just want to point that out, but there are options here and it's really cool. But overall, I just want to make a quick video to explain how to use the SDI port on your camera because I really don't want you blowing this up and having to send this back to Blackmagic and, and spending more money on your camera and being down for production and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully this video is helpful. If you found value, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.